We're recording, Peter. You are live. All right. Thanks so much for joining me and uh, joining us. That Hopefully what this will be is a workout you can participate in, find your uh, appropriate level, and not feel like you're completely exhausted uh, afterwards, but instead like recharged and ready to participate in some of the some of the other offerings that follow. Um, what I'd like to do is if when you need variations and I start covering some different variations of a movement that I'd be able to check in with you guys, see what versions you're using, uh, or if you need more variations. Uh, and there also might be some time where we can ask about like what kind of uh, implements or additional things you could add. This is gonna be body weight, but even within a body weight workout, sometimes some simple tools like a towel or, um, well, we'll get there uh, when it's time. The first bit, if you can stand up nice and tall, we'll salute you in, bringing those two offices together, open palm and fist. And I'm gonna take my stance, kind of exaggerated like a superhero, broad collarbones, I'm gonna squeeze my buns tight, pull up on my kneecaps and be a, kind of a statue here, except for the neck. We're gonna try to be relaxed through the neck and we're stimulating this little reflex, a breathing reflex. You're gonna take a bigger inhale up, and a longer exhale down. You're gonna go real slow at first and faster as it feels good. Mostly do about 10 or 20 repetitions, but I invite you to do more and less as it feels appropriate. We're gonna start with the neck and then we'll go through all the major joints. All the while, keep trying to tie your breath into the movement. Inhale up, exhale down, up and down about 10, 20 times, then left and right. I want you to plug in some muscle when you're trying to mobilize your body. So if you look to the left, I want you to push through your right foot. And if you look to the right, push through your left foot. Just that opposite oh. energy rooting you down. Not just pushing through your heel, but squeezing your buns. And imagine yourself getting a little taller. If you had a few extra virtual vertebrae coming out the crown of your head. Then we're gonna tilt the head to the left and right as if your ear is getting glued to your shoulder. And I'm still trying to keep my jaw relaxed and breathing deep. We've been up and down, left and right, and now this lateral flexion or side bending. If we put it all together in a little fried rice mix, it's gonna be a figure eight or a infinity loop that you roll back and forth. Like your nose is a paintbrush. You get a little bit of everything that way. Up, down, side to side, and rotational movement too. Anytime you need it, you can let me know. I'll give you a different viewpoint on the movement for the side or walk up a little closer if we need to. For example, with the hands here, if you can spread out your hands real wide and then clench your fists super tight. Inhale, spread them out. Exhale, clench tight. When you inhale, try to connect some of the tension to the back side of your body. So I'm doing things like clenching the, the glutes again, squeezing the buns, pinching back the shoulder blades and feeding the extended hands. When I close my fists, I'm gonna brace my abdomen like someone's gonna poke me in the guts and I'm gonna flex a little bit into the front of the body. Flex the wrist back in an exaggerated way and then try to curl them down, up, down, up, down five, 10 times like we did for the neck, like your yes nod, side to side like your no nod, 10, 20 times, and then big circles. We're gonna be on our wrists a little bit today in some push-up kind of positions. So I wanna warm them up well, making those big circles or figure eights like we did earlier. Okay, take your time through the wrist. You're gonna go through your elbows next. Deep bend your elbows and extend. When in doubt, take that exaggerated posture, lock your legs tight. The idea is if one part of your body is very stable, then another part of your body can be very mobile. So make the center stable, make your roots down through the floor stable, and then we can be mobile through our extremities. Right now, the elbows. I'm taking my elbows in these circles, now I'm gonna rotate, thumbs down. It's an inwardly rotated shoulder, internal rotation, same elbow circles. I don't intend that you try every single version of every single exercise, but when it feels appropriate, you can try to add some speed or complexity. High and low, same time, we'll add some complexity. Rolling those elbows, oh, if that felt good, try changing direction. Play a little brain game. And here it comes the other way, high and low, fast and slow. This should get you a little heat through your upper back and shoulders. I want you to pinch back your shoulder blades, take your arms wide like a T, 
We're going to twist them like we're wringing out a towel. And then we're going to twist and reach. One thumbs up, one's down. I'm going to reach for the back of my head and my tailbone. Not necessarily trying to make the hands touch. Some of you might get there, but more trying to feel the rotation in the shoulder girdle. Not moving much through the spine, not yet. Keep reaching without overarching or rounding your back. Twist and reach until we got about 10, 20 repetitions. And then let your shoulders relax just a little bit. This next one from the side view is puffing up through your spine, your mid spine, your T spine, the house of your ribs, puff up and collapse without moving too much the head or too much through your pelvis. It's like your Superman, Superwoman, you're gonna rip off the shirt, close, open, close, open. Next, we're gonna go side to side. I'm gonna take my hands like they're wings, arms like wings, thumbs towards your own collarbones. And I want you to peel one side high and the other side goes short, side bend. Slow at first, but you don't have to stay slow. You wanna to try to breathe with this too, but I won't let that be an extra stress, like exactly when you need to breathe, just keep breathing big. Side to side, we went front to back, and now a twist. I'm gonna gently twist, I'm gonna soften my stance just a little bit for this one, although you could stay locked out in your legs if that was comfortable. I'm softening my stance and absorbing some of the energy into the hips, knees, and ankles. I was going to twist about 10, 20 times and then head into the lower back for my focus. Two hands support the lower back to press into extension and then flexion like you're catching a bowling ball in the low belly. Front to back 10 to 20 times. Inhale, extend, exhale, flex. I'll reference a few times today. I think the easiest way for, for everybody is to think of a clock face uh, for a lot of these movements. The clock face is gonna be on the floor right now. And you're gonna try to head out to those 10 o'clock and two o'clock angles and then backwards to like that four o'clock or eight o'clock angle, side to side with the hips. So there's a couple moves today that will use this oblique angle to mobilize the pelvis and the, the torso. So I'm doing this about 10 times side to side, like a floss, throw in some dance moves. I'm gonna go back and forth through my corners and then a big circle, hit all the edges. Do about 10 each direction. We've been through a lot of the major joints. We're heading downstream, lumbar, pelvis, and hip right now. I'm gonna try to isolate just my hip joint to rotate inward and outward. And if it's appropriate for you, if you can find this and feel this, Try not to rotate on the big toe side. Try to be a little more on the outside edge of your, your foot when you do this rotation. And it should get you more range of motion, a little more active foot. Uh, save that big toe. Try to be on the ball of your foot, but on the pinky edge. And I'll reference this later when we're doing some of our other movements. Gives you more athletic foot. So inward and outward rotation, just the hip. We're gonna head downstream in a moment. For this next piece, if you had something to hold on to, wouldn't hold you again, hold it against you, or just imagine you're holding on to something so that you feel stable. You're gonna circle just your hip about 10 times each direction. Bigger circles if it feels good. Yeah, it's about 10, so I'll go the other way. Both sides, still breathing deep. So got that exaggerated posture, shoulders back, head high. Then I want you to flex your hip. So we're in that single leg balance, again, holding on to something if we need to. We're after the knee at a flex position. The knee can rotate a little bit. Imagine you're circling your foot around an object. And both sides, I'm gonna flex my hip, circle 10 or more, and in each direction. I'm 
down to the ankles. We're going to point our feet two, three, four seconds and flex them to the sky. Foot could be on the ground or in the air here. Inside and outside edges. This might be a little harder to catch. I'm everting and inverting the ankle, taking it inside and outside edges. And then I'm gonna make some big circles. This is all in that same foot so far. So let's get both sides. Plant and flex, point to the earth, point to the heavens. Get the inside, outside edges. Make some big circles. Use the next few movements as a bit of an assessment because there's some things we'll do on the ground that'll help assist you to get more out of it. The first one is a hinge, soft your knees, set back your hips like you're about to take a big long jump. Inhale, flex, exhale up, try 10 to 20 and just give yourself a little assessment how things are moving today. If you have a little snap in your hips, if you can put the brakes on by using your abdominals and your glutes at the top, so you feel controlled. Inhale back, exhale up, inhale back, exhale up. We'll try some variations of that later, but 10 to 20 to get your baseline. Next, you're gonna try to squat. So instead of just sending my hips back with soft knees, I'm gonna pull backward and downward. Exhale up, and we're gonna do about 10, 20 of those. So I'll give you a view from a couple different angles. I got my both arms forward as a counterbalance. <sighs> Inhale down, exhale up. <sighs> feet might be turned out slightly. Try not to smash the big toe again here. Be on the outside edge of your feet if you can. Give it another five or so. We're gonna use a lot of different squat and lunge variations. Just trying to set you up for success there. Get your baseline for hinging and for squatting. Uh, a little more through the shoulders and then we'll head to the floor. I want you to throw some big circles through your shoulders. Circle your arms five, 10 times forward. Backward. And then maybe forward and backward. Keep that moving. Forward and backward. And changing directions. Last guy here that from standing, that's a complex movement. Setting your weight on your right foot. Take your left leg back and then across. So mostly my right foot. Arms wide in that kind of L shape here. I'm gonna shorten my right side, elbow into ribs. Like I'm holding something valuable under my armpit. I'm gonna bring the elbow towards my tailbone. The other arm's holding the roof up. Press, 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 pull, pull, pull. Shorten the right side, lengthen the left. You're a coil, spring, pinch your inner thighs, tuck your tailbone, squeeze your butt. And you can release that coil after about five breaths. Take it to the other side, load the left foot, not too heavy on the big toe. <sighs> Embrace opposites here in any way that you can. If your left side's short, your right side's long. Left side strong and rooted, left leg, then right leg would be kind of light. I'm gonna show you just one more time for a side on that. Coil stretch, bend and twist, bend and twist until there's no more left. Shorten up one side, lengthen the other. About five breaths and trade. So you're trying to get active with this warm up through your joints, mobilize fluid, and make connections to long chains of muscle and connective tissue. I like to think of it as this deep front line, abs, hip flexors, quads. We're gonna work those muscles. Superficial back line through the back extensors, glutes, hamstrings, gonna work those muscles. The lateral subsystems, inner thigh, outer thigh, obliques and lats, we're gonna work all of those too. Um, so not individual muscles like a bodybuilder today, but trying to get long lines of tissue. We're gonna set back our hips next. We're gonna head towards the floor. 
Set back your hips, hands to your knees. If you can, to reach the floor, walk forward like yoga's down dog position. I'm going to put hey, weight on the outside. Yes. Just so you know, we're about halfway through right now. All right, good. We'll get, get some good flow going here then. This will be 10 to 20 reps, and I'm going to show a couple different variations, and then I'd like to see what you guys are using at home. I'm pressing the weight into the outside edge of my hands, so I'm not smashing the thumb side. And for my feet, same thing, not smashing my toes. I'm on the outside edge of the toes. I'm going to pull myself forward, kind of passing through that push-up position, and keep pulling the hips longer, 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 squeeze the glutes, lift the chest. You can point your toes and return. That's one. Faster as it feels good or it becomes more predictable. You don't have to stay in one plane of motion. What do I mean? You can twist to the left, to the right, bring it back. You can add some intensity here if when you're ready. I'm going to add a negative push-up. When I get to the push-up shape, I'm going to tuck my tailbone, squeeze my butt. I'm going to pull my palms towards my toes and my toes towards my palms as if I could shorten the floor up. You won't win that battle against the earth, but you can pull. Lower yourself, take a breath, and then we're back up tall, ready to swim back into the downward dog position. Adding a negative push-up. Peel up. Next, I'm going to try the dive bomber push-up. There's a lot more work through your shoulders. I'm sinking and bending elbows like I'm going under an electric fence. This dive bomber push-up's a lot more stress on some of the same areas as the push-up. If you're really feeling good about this movement, then you're going to dive bomber on the negative, the way down, and then you can try to reverse it, come back under that fence to your elbows, forearms, crouch and return then try just a couple more then i'll see what you guys are working with on that version or what version you've come up with if it's just too much having your hands higher into the air is effective so having like uh, some yoga blocks can make this a little easier nice work nice okay so we got some good variations there. I want you next to step one leg forward. I'll give you a couple different views here. We're gonna have hip distance stance. I have my right leg forward, my tailbone tucked, back foot's flexed, knee is in tracking with my toes, and I'm gonna pulse here by extending the hips, by squeezing the butt. This lead leg's got a job too. I'm trying to pull the earth closer to me as if I can bring my both knees a little closer together. As that settles, we're gonna start to reach a little like we did on the coil stretch. Bring the same side, whatever knee is down, matches that elbow, comes up and across. You can go side to side with it. Another view, side to side. Play with side to side, play with twisting. So we're talking lateral flexion, rotation. And now I'm gonna combine them. So this might be a little bit like a stroke in a racket sport. If you reverse directions, it might little, be a little bit like rowing your boat. I'm keeping my hands connected so it's more my torso moving and not my arms flailing. Okay, you did about 10, 20 of those, either low to high or high to low. I'm gonna try the other side. Tailbone tucked, glutes tight, inner legs pinch, trying to extend your hips. When things start to feel stable, add the side bending, add the rotation, the twist, extension and flexion like we did from standing. When all those things come together, then you're coiling, you're rolling back and forth, which we wanna be able to do. And reverse. Okay, next up, we're gonna get into a standing lunge. Back foot's flexed. Go only as low as you feel comfortable, and we'll see if we can make those same combinations. I'm going to connect the hands like they're bound. Side bend, under, under. So you're making either a low to high, low to high, 
or a high to low. Let's, say, let's call that 10 from low to high. If we use our clock face again, it's like 12 o'clock descending to six. So the arms are bound, so you're not flailing arms, but instead really using torso. I'm gonna call that 10, I'm gonna trade legs. So you can do it with the knee grounded. Again, just keep, that's your, the level you're at or raise up and really put a lot of tension into your legs. Inner leg pinch, loose tight. Can you be stable below so you can be mobile above? Here again, I'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, reverse, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So simple, not easy. Um, we're gonna head back into the floor. You can use the same trip, hinged hips, walk forward the arms. This time the hands are gonna be the ground. We're gonna do the tactical frog and help out your squatting a little bit. So I've taken my feet turned apart from each other, frog position there, and I'm gonna rock a little bit front to back. I'm gonna keep trying to splay the knees wider if I feel I can. And I'm gonna take about five breaths. If we kept walking back, if you flexed your feet and got very active, you could walk yourself right back in potentially to a good squat position. So this can help set up your hips for some effective squats or even some of the single leg version we're gonna do like pubu or a kushiebu cross balancing. We're gonna take about five breaths here and then come down to forearms. Create a little bit of a fight, pull, elbows towards your front pockets, pull and push. So it's rocking, but I'm rocking with tension so that my low back position doesn't change. It's mostly through my hips shortening, lengthening, shortening and lengthening. If everything's feeling good, you're gonna to try to lift up and internally rotate your right hip. That leg's gonna come up a little or a lot, but everything else is gonna to fight to stay still and braced. If someone's gonna come poke you in the guts, you're gonna be tight through your core right now, almost like a plank exercise, pulling, elbows, pushing. Got my second side, about 10 repetitions. And now we're going to go to a tall seated shape. From the tall seated shape, both legs are in front of you, bent about 90 degrees. Press your both arms into the mat, into the ground. Try to press on the pinky edge of your hand. We're going to hip bridge, extend the hips. Try that five to 10 times. If it's too much, you're gonna lay your hands to your side, lay your head back and bridge from the floor. We got a hip bridge or a shoulder bridge, 10 times. Either version, and then meet me in a tall seated shape for hip rotations. So we're gonna rotate back and forth like windshield wipers. If you're feeling good about the movement, then you're gonna add a layer, take your hands away and try to twist through the waist without the hands. Things might feel like they're gonna move a little fast here when we get to the next pieces. So if you got questions, we can break it down and slow down. I want you to rotate to one side or the other. If you're mirroring me, you'll be rotating to your right. Use your right hand into the floor, extend your hips. Now you have this oblique kneeling position. Try to drive up and down from that shape. You can use your hand or even both hands to assist. Extend flex, extend and flex. You got 10, switch sides. Peter? Yes. We've got five minutes left. All right, final five. We're gonna combine now into a little bit of a, a whirlwind of stances here. So the base thing we were doing is flexing, extending our hips with good posture, using supports if we need to. The next step, this rear leg, is gonna come forward, bringing me back to the half kneeling that we set up, okay? From there, I can bend and drop that knee, 
lift up the other side. Okay, so I switch sides, nothing too fancy there. It's when you sweep your leg back like a tail that it gets a little tricky. So now the full circle would be extending the hip, step through, switch to the other side. Now the leg that's in front drops down. So you got this whirling dervish, three coil down. Extend the hips, step forward into half kneeling, rotate from full kneeling to half kneeling, back leg steps. Okay, from here, I want you to stand all the way up. And we're gonna go through a few different kind of lunges. This is the coiled lunge. You could put these movements into a flow. We'll see if we can the last two minutes here. I'm gonna try five per side, a coiled lunge, hands as if they're bound. Weight on the right leg, head's not over foot, but outside of foot. Step behind, lower down. You got a side bend and a twist. Come out to the other side. Only as low as you feel comfortable. Let's do 10. Inhale down, exhale up. Stay on the outside edge of the foot if you can. Don't be hard on the big toe. As you step through, hinge your hips. Back to the dive bomber. Five to 10. Pick your poison. It might be easier now to access a harder version as you've gotten warmed up. I'm gonna slide through one leg to get to that tall seated position. And here's our last level up on our hip bridge. If you're still working your, your bridge with your back on the floor, then uh, you won't have access to this rotation. Otherwise, give it a try. You pick up one leg, weightless. The other foot you push like there's a gas pedal. Empty your opposite arm, opposite leg, and turn. I'm gonna turn and return. One, two, one, two. If you wanna continue your rotation like a rotisserie chicken, you trade hand and leg. Touch and return. We're under switching the shape that you might be able to flow. I'm gonna get about four or five more of these. Rotation and bridge. It's a single arm now bearing the weight. If you need both arms down, that's available. And again, we might be back on the floor, it's okay. You can use the pump of the up dog, down dog to return to your squat and stand back up. So Peter? maybe your squat, yes, about there. We've got one, one minute left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, it flies. So the, flying. <laughs> the, it flies by fast after it will hopefully give you good warm up and again, not exhausting you. But the idea was to give you some uh, stimulation from the ground and back up again. Recommend that to anybody, everybody, all levels to be really comfortable getting down to the ground quickly and back up to the ground quickly. And whether that be coming backwards and upwards out of your squats just to make you more injury proof, regardless of what style you're practicing. Sanda is up next and, you know, hitting the floor and being able to get back up off those hits or, uh, you know, if you miss a technique, being able to absorb your own energy, let alone somebody else's, um, that was some of the advantages of getting up and down off the floor and that big long joint warm up. Again, hopefully that just suits you for the whole rest of the day. Uh, it was wham, bam, quick, but it, very fun. So thanks for participating and hit me up with questions, concerns, and uh, have some fun today with Kung Fu. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Peter. That was awesome. I put links to Peter's Instagram and his uh, website in the chat there if you want to follow him or ask him any questions about stuff. Uh, that concludes our first session of the day. And next up, we have Kenny Perez. All right. Hey, today teaching traditional Kung Fu is Kenny Perez. He's a U.S. Wushu pioneer, original student of Wubin, author, coach, competitor, and we're excited to have him with us today. Kenny, please begin when you're ready. All right. Hey, I hope you all can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, no? We can hear you, yes. A little echoey, but we hear you. Okay, there might be an echo in here. The room's kind of small. Anyways, um, we're going to put these down. Those are the rooms. So, welcome to my class. I'm glad to be part of this uh, presentation. I hope that some people out there will be really excited to learn some of this stuff. And today, I want to cover Chou Jiao, 
And so it was a modern style. This style. This style. But Chojawa uh, is a conking uh, foot or piercing foot, also called stomping foot. And it's a traditional modern style. It's uh, prevalent in uh, Beijing, but um, it's you know pretty much different counties and such in northern China. It's also part of uh, people who do fanzi trend, also do Chojawa. Uh, Chojawa is a, um, a kicking style. There's a saying, uh, northern feet, southern fist. Uh, this is the classical northern foot style, or northern kick, or kicks of the north. And um, it, there's also a saying that I just, uh, says, in northern style, the hands are secondary to the feet, or the hands are the windows to the feet. It's your main weapon, is your feet and your legs. So I'll teach you the routine. It's, very, it's not very long, since we have a, a small format to do this in, but I believe if you have uh, some kind of background in Wushu or traditional, uh, this would be a piece of cake. If, if you're new to Wushu and just checking it out and trying it out, you know, you can learn it too. Uh, just uh, try and uh, keep an open mind and understand uh, the, the basics of the same. You have to have good basics in any style or like traditional style to help you to understand where you're going with this. Um, Chu is a very visually exciting style like other northern styles. It doesn't have the aerials and such. But uh, it's very applicable. And by, when I mean applicable, I mean in, in self defense strategy, your hands are up here and you're fighting. And if you're using your hands correctly, you're actually uh, kind of uh, confusing the guy with your fingers and hands in his face or curl a little different. At the same time, you don't know. You know? And uh, that's the very unique kicks. One of them is called the Mandarin duck kick, it's also called a back stretch kick or a dragon kick. And uh, that could be either attacking. Low or high, and it could also be um, double impact, meaning as you go up to kick, you come down with a stomp. And the stomp could be anywhere, like on your body, or the knee, the inside of the shin, the inside of the knee, or the top of the foot. So um, I like that. This uh, workshop is great because it helped us to warm up and get loosened up, which is fine. So, of course, you want to have a looseness when you're practicing Chou Jiao because of the flexibility involved, especially in the back. The lower back. Um, let me see, let me grab this real quick here. And so, show down against the wall, possibly you can put your, stretch your leg a little bit, put your foot up on the wall like this, and then stretch up and press your leg if you go higher, that's fine. Some people like to walk down from the floor and then put their leg up high and stretch. This loosens up your hip and your lower back and your inside those rotor muscles in the hip and helps you prepare to loosen up. If you're pretty flexible, no problem. If you're usually tight like me, uh, I will put the warm up first because then after you say, oh, my back is hurt, I don't know why. Okay. So, so, so stretch in the back, right? Maybe swing back stretch kicks, back stretch kicks, right? This is also pushing basic. You can go one, two, one, two, maybe step forward with it, step forward with it, right? So these are also pushing basics, just like front stretch kick goes across the floor. Back stretch kick goes across the floor as you step forward. So uh, these are prerequisites to warm up your back, warm up your body, and prepare for some chojo. Okay, um, I'm teaching you a routine. It's basically broken down into 26 moves. It's also called short jab routine. Men Wei Fong is a professor in Beijing at the Sports College. And he's also one of the uh, original pioneers and architects of modern wushu. And uh, Men Hui Fong, maybe, you know, he helped work the 42 step Tai Chi, also the 36 step Shen, and uh, he's very versatile, a professor well respected in Beijing. And this routine comes from Master Men Hui Fong or Professor Men Hui Fong. So, the basic start with the Kohaku Kuzu in your class, Men Hui Fong, right? If it's, you know, if it's it's up to you if you want to remember the history or not. Um, I did want to kind of ex explain a couple of techniques, okay? Uh, I like to explain how they're done so you can see the application real quick before we get into the routine. Real quick, so come on out here, Tim. Uh, so, let me say this. Uh, Tim is going to help me. And basically, uh, say the fighting stance for me, please. Uh, so, uh, in simplicity, 
The techniques mean your hands are confusing on top, or you're kicking, attacking low, right? Whatever you're doing to him, boom. Okay, so right there, I did like four different kicks. Okay, but let me break them down for you. Okay, so here, maybe it's uh, a round kick, almost like tight kickboxing, right? Maybe not too high. Usually they're done low, but sometimes they're done high. A stepping forward heel kick, right? To the leg. Of course, if you snap the leg back, you'll mess up the knee. Right? If you kick the leg in the back, you make them fall forward. Right? If you kick them in the hamstring hard enough, you know, that's going to cause a cramp or a contraction, which will help make the leg stiff for just a second before you fall through. Okay, um, you can kick the groin. Right? There's also uh, the, the man and duck kick, which is kind of like this. It's almost like a, a back hook kick, but the angle comes up. And the good thing about it coming up is it's more hidden. Maybe uh, some people come like this and kick, or round it up. A man and duck kick comes from underneath, right? So it's kind of underneath his view of an eye. You know, it's not swinging out wide. So it kind of comes up, boom, as compared to boom, looking around. So it's almost like a back of a kick, okay? But it doesn't have to be hot, right? You could be in here, better not to boom, right? It's kind of, even with like a, even in a drunken style, you might see, you know, the lady call, like, boom, right? So that's a low band of but the same effect, right? Where you want to hit them. Main targets, the knees, maybe the groin, right? Uh, just for your understanding of how the application works. And then uh, the, the drill and the foot poke is a smash, there's a stomp, there's a drill. Okay, so you might come in like this, boom, right? Right on the instant. Top of the foot has a little pressure sensitivity, right? So if I go like this, you kind of feel that, right? Yes. Okay, so you can stop with your heel. Right? Uh, Kenny, I don't, I don't mean to rush you, but uh, we, we're already, we only have 20 minutes left. Uh, so just, I would give you regular time uh, warnings. Okay, thank you for that. And drop, drop the heel, drop the foot down. Okay, so dropping the foot forward is called a poking or drilling. So between the manner duck kick and the poking and drilling, those are the two main kicks involved in the, um, that are distinctive of a chou jiao. Okay, so within that 20 minutes or less, we're going to cover this with you, right? Okay. All right. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Keep up with me, I'll break it down slowly and we'll talk about it. Okay, of course we're gonna run from uh, right to left, maybe I'm backwards on your camera or whatever on your screen, but I'm starting to the, to the right side of the camera and move to the left, feet together, of course there's any other routine. Um, from here, you might want to sit up, right? Sit up if you want to sit Then we're gonna do our first cross step, which is preparing the hands. I'm going preparing the hands. What we're gonna do is swing our hands across like over one, and step, right? Go on, step. And your hands swing out to the left. Fist palms up, there's a cross step in front. And then you get across to the right and do the same thing. The right hand's gonna step around and cross to the left. As your hands swing to the right. And lastly, you're gonna bring your left foot in with the dropping dean or dropping poke. Right? As you swing your fist out. Right? So here you are. Okay, it's kind of like a kid's stance. Your knees are this way, your knees are kind of this way, and you're dropping the power down into the ground as you come here, okay? So let's do that again, cross right, cross left, drop the drop the thing, jam the foot or poke the foot. So from here it's one, two, three, right? Three, easy, that's number one. Okay, number two is we're gonna step in with a back fist, as you step in and strike with the left foot, okay? Again, it's a kick, or a drill. Then right? we're gonna roll the fist around, carry uppercut or palm up, punch. So three, two. Okay, next one is the white snake hisses. The white snake hisses. Your hands like this, okay? And you roll, horizontal roll, as you carry, carry your block, carry your block, carry your block. Three times, one, two, three. Okay, so one, two, one, two, three. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. Then you open your hands up. As you step in with the left foot, and you're gonna 
cross, block, and punch. Okay, and punch like this. Like draw the bow. Punch, punch, punch. Three times again. Notice the foot. Get back here. Okay. So the foot. It's almost like trapping the legs, kicking the legs down on the foot. Boom, one, two, three. Boom, two, three. Okay. Sitting back on the back leg. Draw the bow or pull back and punch. Okay. So let's do this again. All right. Half you salute. You cross over, swing one, swing two, three. Step in, like this, one strike, little punch, white snake this, one, two, three, open, step, punch, one, two, three. Okay, the next one is a cutting and pressing palm. From here, we're going to bring our back, right leg up to a knee hook, transitional, you don't want to hold it too long. As you press low. So from here, you go one, then you, I'm sorry, your right hand goes on top. Okay, then you unwind. As you step back, you grab, you pull down, right, to here. Looks like a shibu. This is also an Easter egg. I should show you that. So, one, two, three, pull back. Okay, and this is going to repeat. So I'm going to show you one second hand side, which makes this more reason this part is so easy to learn. After you come back and retract and pull, you block up and punch, block up and punch. As you do that, you do a heel kick with the right leg. Boom. Right. So one, two. Then you're going to just plant that foot and kick with the left foot as you punch. Boom. Again. So number one is over the block, and two, okay. That's your foot. Number three, ancient leg technique, which is called Mandarin duck kick, or the back stretch kick. Three, come up like this, and kick, and drop. Drop it like it's hot, okay. So there's a kick up, and there's a stomp down. So if we go back to three punches, Knee hook, pull back, two. One, two, three. All right, stop down. That gets repeated on the next side. So I'm going to start from the beginning and move to there. Salute. One, two, three. Step, back hand, punch. White snips, kiss it three times. Open, step through. Punch three times, right? Knee hook, cut and press. Knee <laughs> kick. Other side. Man in touch. Let come back here. Drop the heel with a poke. Go down. Then you're going to do the other side. Same thing. Knee hook, left hand on top. Draw out a circle, grab, pull back. Block up. Good kick, punch, measure and block, strike, boom, stomp on the way down. All right. Let's do a big pop. Next move, turn, backhand, the left hand is high, right hand, backhand, pull it back to your waist as you start to kick, pop. All right. Punch your foot back. Still after, measure and block, kick, turn, Back, pull, straight kick, step back. Now do the other leg, and then kick backwards. Stop. We're halfway through, we're going the other way. So, Good time warning, we have 15 minutes left. 15? Oh, that's a lot of time. I'm almost done. Okay. As you stop, you turn, open, twist, as you punch down. Twist and punch down. Straight down punch. It's called a song stance or a song step with a punch. And next is a round kick. Boom. Round kick. I'm going to double clap. Double clap. Okay. I'm going to step back and push. Double push ball. 
swing, stretch, double hook hands back, as you heel kick, plant, <laughs> double pick, double pick. Okay, here we go. Let's go from today. Since we have 15 minutes, we are almost done. Okay, salute. Cross, cross, strike it. Right, step in back fist, no strike, roll punch, hissing, white snake hiss, two, one, two, three times, open, punch, one, two, three times. Okay, knee hook, cut, press, pull back, cut, Dean kick, Dean kick, right back kick. So, cross, left hand on top, we look. Back <laughs> one, kick, better duck kick, stop. Okay. Turn, back hand, pull back, stretch kick, step back, swing back kick, stop. We're going back, back. Turn, twist hands, punch straight down, kick, hop. Step back, go push. Okay. Turn the hook. Pick. Double pick. All right. We're going to move on. And double pick. You're going to open. We do this three times. One, two, three. And four becomes another minor duck kick. So here, one, two, three, four, boom. Drop the, drop the foot, drop it. Okay, I'm gonna turn forward. And then, I'm sorry, we're gonna change our direction to three o'clock. As we turn three o'clock, we're gonna roll, do a punch as you kick. <laughs> left leg, right hand. Left heel kick. Foot turn slightly longer. One, two, three. Plant. Right nose kick. This is palm. The flower hides within the leaves. Boom. Roll kick. Boom. Roll kick. Open. Touch your foot. Left hammer over the top. We're going to the left heel kick. Boom. When the foot comes down, it goes back up. One more. Boom. Oops. One more. Ready to kick. And we go. One, two, three. Boom. Okay. So there's probably about three manual duck kicks in there. And uh, between that, there's two other kicks. We can learn back here. All right. So, 26 moves. 26 moves introduce you to the Chojiao style. And I think we probably have about 10 minutes left. We have 10 minutes left. Is there anyone out there who has a question on, on any of these movements that you would like some clarification on? Or if you like, we can, oh yes, Anastasia has a question. The very first step, you're stepping with your left foot, right? Or are you stepping with your right foot? Left. Left, left. Okay. okay. Thank you, just making sure, because then I thought I was doing the whole thing backwards. Yeah, no, it's, it's a mirror image, but I got it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, yes. Any other questions? We're gonna walk through it a few times. Okay, walk through it a few times, short. Would you be able to walk through it like from the other side? Like we could watch you from behind? Oh, no. uh, my eyes are going to be closed. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. Here we go. All right, just salute. And left foot cross, right hand swing. Repeat to the opposite. Last week, try to follow your foot. Good job. As you swing up your hands, right. 
Notice my foot is kind of turning in. This is our third step. I'm done. And here we're stepping right in towards nine o'clock. Let's do a little wash and back fist. Wash. And roll here and punch to the top. Case goes one, two. Oh, cool. This is it. Oh, two. Okay. And your right left hand comes on top. Your hands like this. The snake hisses. Snake hisses or the snake spits the poison. Kind of translate it. Three times. One, two, three. Right. Open your hands. Right hand goes back. Step in with the left foot. Over the right hook. Lock. Punch. Like pull bow. Right? And you do this three times. So one, two, three. Okay? Here. Okay. After the third left punch, pull the ball, you press the right hand on top of the right leg of the knee. Press. Unwind. Pull the ball. Pull back. Pull back. Come here, real quick, Jay. And just so you can see what the tool is going on here. When I, when I unwind the tool, my leg pulled back. There's actually an knee strike made to the thigh or towards his knee. So from here, boom, right? Boom. Right? So you use your knee as a strike too. So it's not necessarily the foot, but the foot, the foot, also boom, the knee. Oh, okay. Come back. Side of the, side of the thigh here, you ever see police officers with the billy sticks? Pop, pop, they hit people or throw kickboxes. It is too common for you to learn. Very sensitive. From your fingernails. That's a striking thing. So here we go. One, two, three. Right press, right back, boom, retract. Next, left hand block is right hand push. At the same time, ding, hip. And the other punch back. After this, you punch the kick of the left one, ding, hip. You can retire in your first Mandarin duck leg or the dragon kick. Your hands go like this. Oh, that's Stop. So it's kick, stop. Okay. After you finish that, you're going to do the same three to four moves on the opposite side. So we turn, what's the night clock? Still, left hand on top, as you go. On the line, grab, still back, boom. Is that a stop? Is that a knee? Is that a chain? Pull back. Okay. From here, right hand block. The left punch as you left kick, low. Shin height, knee height. One, two, plant. Then to left, back stretch. Hands open. One, two, two. So it's one, two. Turn. Close that cock. Still like a new arm. Knee and backwards. Pull it back to your waist. As you stretch kick, boom. Right. Then the left side can do another right kick, boom, stop. So you never want to lose your right where it was to be applied. So after stretch kick, boom, kick, stop. Notice my hands. Turn, twist, step, punch, jam. Boom. Then right kick. Boom. All right. Double clap. Okay. Push back to your double push palms. Switch your feet. Boom. Turn double wrist hook back. Then the left. Double kick. After you kick, you fly forward. Double kick. Arms down. Up the steps. So it's not straight, it's just close. Okay. From here, open up, crisscross it open three times. Just sit back. One, two, three, one more One, two, three, and four comes up. Try to kick, stop. And the end up kick, stop. Turn. Turn towards the right. 
Here you're gonna wind up and punch. Right fist, palm up. Just do a left hook kick. Boom. That turns right into a right hand stays out. You turn the push. Called flower opens up and the flower hitting the end of the leaves. So for a punch, just appear for a push. So one, two. And after kick, you punch from the front. Hammer from the left, screw on the top, with the left hip kick. Boom. Okay. So the next thing up behind, boom, you drop. You can hear here on the last one. Here or here. And from here, shoot. First position. Sit together and finish. Okay. Both sides. How much time we got? Awesome. Thank you. We have uh, two and a half minutes. We did have one question from one of our uh, viewers. Uh, is asking about the position of the right hand for the pull the bow movement. Is it high or low? It is chest height. Chest height. Chest height. Thank you. Cool. So, Cho Jiao. It's in Bata Chen. It's in traditional law office. It's in contemporary law office. It's great to know. It's good for loosening up your back. It's good fighting still. It's long range. It's close range. That's what I'm going to um, it could be very poetic, it could be very uh, fierce. It's totally how you want to use it. But add it to your repertoire or expand your wushu horizons and help you to maybe step up the ladder to understand more about the earth diversity in wushu. Any other questions? Uh, we, we have a minute and a half left. Is there a, a specific drill or, um, that you would recommend people to do to help them um, improve this style specifically? Well, if you're practicing cho jiao, the drills could be across the floor like that. Right? Sometimes they make them big and go, it depends on how you want to practice it. But those are traditional, so it's kind of application side. And it's not necessarily uh, beautiful movements with the application. So the concentration is on the application movements. But those are some of the basics. And I, I just, uh, just like everybody else nowadays, you can go on YouTube and say, Master You. Learn a lot of stuff from YouTube. It's out there and it can help you advance to learn more about diversity, all the techniques of the school job. Don't be shy. There's a lot of stuff out there for free. Sorry, uh, Sifu, what is the name of this form? Short jab, sit. Short jab, sit. Oh, so awesome. It's beautiful. Uh, if you look it up, I don't know. Well, Menhui Fong is the, the architect of it, Master or Professor Menhui Fong. Men Wei Fong. Okay. Thank, thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you so much. All right, that was an awesome forum. Like I said, everyone, we will have this recording on uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, which well, but probably up as soon as uh, tomorrow. Um, and next up, we will have Justin Eggert with the Tai Chi se session. Yeah. We All right. Nice. Thank you. That that was really amazing. Thank you, uh, Master Kenny Perez. That was that was a treat. Thank you. I was watching. It's really really cool. So uh, hi, my name is Justin Eggert. I'm just get right into it really quickly. I've been doing Tai Chi for 300 years. I know I look really young, but um, that's why you should all study Tai Chi. Uh, okay. Anyways, so uh, what I'm going to do today, since we only have 30 minutes and there's, if anything you start doing with Tai Chi can take a lot longer to get any uh, detail or, uh, you know, some value out of it. But I have uh, uh, some really cool things I want to share with you guys. <laughs> nice. 300 years in 30 minutes, right? Um, so I'm going to, we're going to pick one movement that's really common. So if you don't know Tai Chi or you know Tai Chi, I'm going to give you a lot of interesting concepts and things to train within that one single movement. And uh, sometimes when I teach this, it takes me a couple of days to get it where people can actually apply it correctly. So um, we'll see how much we can do in 30 minutes. Okay. So first, some warm up stuff. It's not really warm up. It's going to get into the concepts we're going to use right away. Okay. Number one. Ready, everybody? Stand up. Relax. We're going to have our palms here in front of you. 
and we're going to start by dropping your shoulders, okay? And expanding your elbows out to the sides. So it's really important that you don't pick your shoulders up here. You wanna feel a stretch, like a nerve stretch going down to the elbow, okay? So we're expanding and making power out to the elbow. Then reach that, drop the elbow so that the power can get out to the wrist. Okay, if your elbows are still up, okay, the tension is gonna build up in your shoulders and your power will not make it out to your wrist in the way you want in Tai Chi Chuan. So watch, we're gonna go expand, elbow goes out, drop the elbows and stretch the wrists. If your shoulders are really low here and you're anchoring them deep, right? That's a Chen Jian Zui Zhou. You anchor really deep, you're gonna feel a twisting and a twining reaching down your fingertips. You do this, skip. Hmm? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear that. I'll keep going for a second. And uh, if you want, you can ask the question in the text maybe first. And I'm happy to answer questions as we go, but just a second, let me finish this. So you wanna feel the stretch get all the way out to your fingertips, okay? So I'm gonna start by dropping the shoulders. It rolls out and spirals through to the fingertips. Okay, now what we're doing is we're learning Tai Chi trend, right? Tai Chi meaning like yin and yang boxing. The original name was not yin yang boxing. It wasn't Tai Chi trend, but I still really love this. It's a great name for Tai Chi because we're gonna be using this yin yang theories and concepts a lot. This first one we're calling a yang expansion, okay? so. And it's, why is it yang? It's because it's an outward spiral that develops from the center and grows outwards. Okay, we're gonna define a yin spiral, not as the like going limp. That's what a lot of people do. They go, okay, yang, they like they make power and then they go limp and yield. We do wanna use yielding, but when we do yin, it's actually gonna be inward coiling. It's not limp. There's power, but you're gonna be threading through your arm and back to your center, okay, closer to you. So we want to think of yang as reaching out and spiraling away to others, yin as spiraling inwards towards yourself. Once you establish that, a lot of movements in Tai Chi starts to show um, its application and its use, and it's really actually kind of ingenious. In Tai Chi, you never want to have both sides as yang. One side will be yin, one side will be yang. Okay, this is a common, I see this mistake often. People often do everything all together as yang or everything all together as yin. We're gonna have it so that in this exercise, we did everything as yang, right? And then everything as yin. But in the form, it almost never happens. So let's learn, we're gonna learn the movements called lan chui wei, grasp the sparrow's tail. Okay, this, this version comes from yang style, but there's many, many, uh, many versions of this form in different styles, okay? So that yang power, we're gonna start learning the movement and just keep going with the concept. The yang power here is gonna keep reaching out away. Uh, oh, by the way, sorry, this is my, this should be your left hand. I'm, I mirror image everything I do, okay? So if you, uh, you look at the screen and you see things going to this side, that go to that side of the room. <laughs> this side, that side of the room, okay? So left hand, Left hand spirals out and reaches across and see my palm is facing down. Palm is facing down, elbows low, but my fingers are reaching farther away and I feel like a stretch out to my fingertips. Just watch out, you don't lift your shoulder. You don't want your shoulder up, keep it anchored, okay? So your finger is gonna reach away from your shoulder and you arc across the top. This is the yang position or yang, a yang movement, outward expanding, arm stretch, okay? Now, the other side is gonna do a yin movement. The right hand, your right hand is going to fold inwards, see, and cut with the inside of the wrist, the pinky side of the wrist. It's gonna cut inwards and tuck in towards your center, okay? So if I do them at the same time, look, there's a spiral out and a spiral in, and they're wrapping around each other. They kind of complete this like a hugging a tree almost. Huh? I, I like to call it like a double helix. So the power comes through your back on the left side over the top. At the same time, you close in and fold and the power comes into your center with the right hand below. Now I have a pet peeve here. A lot of people call this holding the ball. 
到球。Hey. But you don't want to be statically like putting your hands here with your palms together and feel like you're holding onto a ball. You're not holding a ball. It's not the beach volleyball or something like this, right? We are spinning and thrusting the left hand on top while we tuck in and bring the right hand below to the center. Okay. So you're gonna have this. The power comes from the ground up through your back to this hand. At the same time, simultaneously tuck in and shrink down into the back leg. So that should be your、uh, left leg that's folding. Okay, good. So watch out for that. It's not like this. It's hard on Zoom, right? It's not like this, like holding a two D palms together. You're gonna reach out. The left hand is further out than the right. The right hand is tucked in, scooped. Okay, so it's a swirl and a spiral. Now the next part. Okay,、uh, let me move this a little bit. I'll get back more. Next part. We're gonna take a step out wider. Okay. Um, I'm going to make sure that my back foot is at a 45 from where the front foot is. So, if you're familiar with bow stance, gongbu, right? We're going to be doing a, a yang style gongbu. So we're fully back here. We've got to hold the ball. Okay. Now we're ready to start the movement. This is not the movement yet. Okay. Next, we're going to go. The left hand becomes yin. Okay. The left hand becomes yin, and the elbow spirals down towards the center. That's right. Remember, it was just it was just in yang, right? Reaching up. So you're gonna go full down and tuck in towards the center line. At the same time, now you transfer power through the right side, up through the right side. Okay. So I'm expanding my elbow and my wrist, and it's kind of bubbling out and filling. This one shrinking in and compressing, right? So wrap around, goes fold in with the left, expand with the right. At the same time, you see how I'm shifting, so I'm shifting across and pushing forward. Also, if you're familiar with the standardized tai chi, you're probably going to be doing this way, but I'm doing more like the traditional yang style tai chi. The palm is going to stay up here, very close to the. Lead hand there. So ready, full back. Number one, left hand is yin, right hand is yang, and you feel and you shift. Here, the power came from my back heel up through my back into the right side of the body. Okay, from there, I'm going to switch to yin and yang opposite. Now the right side is going to drop. The power transfers to the hand, and now this hand pushes out yang, and reaches very close. They almost touch, okay, but they're not going to touch. So this is all on the way up. I go one, pick up the elbow, two, push and wave reach. Okay, go back, hold the ball, make sure we're wrapping. Oh, I said hold the ball, didn't I? <laughs> back to this movie. <laughs> Start it. <laughs> so catchy, right? One, drop the elbow, lift.、And、look, this side of my body is pushing. So all the power is coming through my right side. But now I'm going to stop shifting and I'm going to use rotational force. Two, rotate. So I'm already over here, but now I'm going to push, and the left side of my body is now leading. Okay, so Yang Sal likes to use this way where we use the force from the shift separately to gain ground. Once you've gained ground over on this side, then you twist and use rotational force.、So、you got this rotational power, right, that spins around, and you got this shifting force between the two posts, right. So your center goes shift across and then spiral and twist. Shift across, spiral and twist. Shift across, spiral and twist. Okay, let's do it all again. Ready? From here, wrapping. We go one. Power shoots up through the back. And see, I'm not rotating. I'm just shifting. Two. Now I'm no shifting, just rotating. Push through this side. Now the left side reaches up. And again, they haven't touched. They just got close. I'm not pushing my. I'm not clapping my hand. We're gonna do something like that later. Right now, it's not touching. Okay, good. So I'm gonna catalog these really quick for you. Look, the 
Left hand, yin. Right hand, yang. It's expanding. Then flip it. Right side, yin. See, fold the hip, rotate, power comes through the back, and the left side, yang. Okay, try again. One, right side is yang. See this side tucked in. Two, twist, flip it, and push. So when the left yang, see, my leg digs in the ground, I connect through the ground, my back turns, okay? And the power I can fit pushing into my palm here. From the ground, spiraling up into the palm. Okay, one more time. One, two, okay. Now three is more complicated. Let me show you my hands up close. For three, okay, this young power is gonna keep going. It's kind of like you're revving on a motorcycle. That's the left hand. The left hand goes grab and turn, okay? Grab and turn, roll down, and then pull towards yourself, okay? So my left hand goes turn around, see the wrist gets in front, and then look, the yin power here is pointing to myself and cradling down by my waist. So it's like I'm carrying something between. I don't want to have my wrist here flat on my waist, cradling down below. See, so it's pretty round. The elbow needs to twist a little, the wrist is down. So I did is I press upwards here. This is spiraling up called Pong. Now watch, when I roll around, okay, and I pull down here, this is the yin side. The left has become yin, and I start to shift back. However, I'm gonna chop down. So my uh, right hand is not also pulling back. You don't wanna pull back with both of them. This is what I see most commonly. Um, if you ask me, it's, it's not the best technique to pull back with both. This one's gonna pull back and this one's gonna chop down and up, okay? So this part is putting pressure, your elbow, your wrist, your hand, it's all expanding and hitting. That's in a young position, right? It's chopping. Okay, so this one turn around and pull while this one chops and presses up, right? And then all happens while you shift, right? So that's it again, ready? Here, your left hand's here pushing towards your right. Now your left's gonna take over for a second and then roll down. The right hand is gonna press the elbows heavy and it chops down with the elbow and wrist and forearm. So the whole forearm is gonna press there. You're actually gonna use that in the application, you're pressing on the forearm. Okay, good, let's do it one more time. Ready, wrap around, hold the ball. Now, everyone will usually start by picking up the front hand. Start by doing the yin first. First, yield inward, lift up. Now shift and push through to the right. That's number one. Two. Rotate and expand from the left side across. Three, spiral down, bring this under and chop here. Okay, so it's not, they're not both pulling. This one's growing away from you. Right? That's reaching out. This one is cradling and coming in closer and closer. And you wanna feel like it's spiraling down the drain to your back foot. <clears throat> it's actually if I, I just keep going down, down, down into this foot if I needed to. Justin, I just want this is pushing Justin, I, I just want to give you a, a, a times warning that uh, we're halfway through. There's 15 more minutes. Oh, good. I, I only have three more hours left that I'm going to be doing. <laughs> Already reach on top. One, see the right side lifts. Two. Left side pushes, three, left side pulls, and the right side does what? Chops down, okay? Cool. Again, what I see often is this stuff. A, ha, <laughs> okay? Try to do that to somebody. <laughs> no, hey, look, see, pull and chop. This is gonna under curve and that's gonna reach out. Here's where it get complicated. That was all the easy part. Okay, ready? <laughs> uh, I better give you a count, otherwise we'll get lost. So one more time. 
One, right side is yang, pushing, hitting through the back. Two, left side is yang, pushing. Three, left side becomes yin, and the right side is yang, chopping. Now, four, this hand that was chopping is going to become yin. And that's going to happen by coming to the center. So I'm going to scoop in and spiral, and the palm comes right facing your dantian, belly button. Huh? Hey. What does this one do? This one's going to push and meet it halfway. So the left side is going back. Hey, that's for three. So for four, you're going to expand and make a power comes from the ground up your back and pushes with the left hand. At the same time, the right wraps around and comes in, so they meet in the middle. Watch me, you see? Press down, chop. Now like swirl and wrap around, close. So this power of the yang one kind of took over and I'm rotating on the back leg. Make sure your knee doesn't wiggle around. That's a common mistake. You gotta open and close your hip so that your knee can stay steady. So ready, chop down, spiral around and bring the right hand inwards. Right hand comes in, left hand pushes it. Okay. Now here's where a lot of mistakes are gonna happen usually. Everyone likes to just push both hands together they're touching, right? But check this out. There's still a yin and a yang exchange. So first, the left side is gonna spiral in and you transfer through the right. And then the right side spirals elbow in and you transfer through the left. So I have this little like a helix like this going, ba ba, right? Usually you're not gonna make it so exaggerated. It's hard to see that. So if someone's really good, they're gonna do that, but hide it. Some people are doing good, but they don't know how to do that. So <laughs> you go hit and then twist. Okay, this is how this works. When I have contact with someone and I'm applying force to them, they're not going to let me push them. The second I give them a force, their body responds, right? They're gonna quickly change. You try to get out of the way, they're gonna underneath, they're gonna twist. They respond to my power. So if every single push you do has a different direction of force all the time, you can change with that very easily. Bah, bah, right? The power comes from the ground here, from the ground here, from the ground here. So you can change really quickly and your power is never one single static force. Okay? It's always dynamic and spiral, like the yin yang, right? Tai Chi. Huh. So watch. From here, we had this push in. We're gonna go spiral power through the right. Then spiral power through the left. And see the palm are touching, they're gonna brush like this. At the very end, when, my, when I reach the full extension on the left side, then it's gonna be time to flip. And now I flip it and I'm gonna pull back with the left side, that's left yin. My right side is gonna actually push out more, just for a second, Look, I pull back and I press, I feed the power through here. So if I'm pulling someone, they're gonna feel the pull, but they're also gonna feel push around the other end. So they'll feel pull this way and push this way. It rotates people a little bit. Okay, good. Now watch, I'm gonna start pushing with the left and then I'm going to start pulling with the right for the first time. Okay, so when I do that, and if you can see my feet, when I do on this last one, I'm gonna pick this up here. So I started pushing with the left, pulling with the right, okay? And I kind of dropped down. You want to keep it up higher traditionally, huh? If you look at the modern Tai Chi, people do a lot of stuff like this, but that's, the pet, that's another pet peeve of traditionalists. The, the hands are usually up higher, <laughs> excuse me. So I go shift in and the first, everything's gonna to push together, but the power is flowing through the right side again. Same principles involved. The left side, look, tucks in close to me. That's actually a yin. So if you look from this angle, when I'm going to push somebody, okay, this side is going to close in while this side reaches through. And the power came through this side of my back. But before that goes too long, then it's going to even out. And I'll transfer the power back through the left. And they'll end up arriving into this push, right? Now I'm exaggerating this, making it bigger. The spiraling won't be so big where you're like this, check it out. 
Okay, you're not gonna be like this all the time. But look, see, I'll show you a more uh, hidden one. I transfer the power to this side. 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 Those are all changes of yin and yang. And sometimes people is like they they ask the, to my students say, "Hey, I saw the master so and so. He's like a wiggling all the time. It's a little wiggle, right?" And sometimes, mo most of the time, it's because they're doing this. Well, uh, I'm not gonna say anything. Anyways, if they're good, they're transferring yin and yang. <laughs> my elitism is showing. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So see, I'm rolling through the back, twisting. Twisting again, see, transfer from the legs and push from the legs. Every single thing you do in Tai Chi should kinetic link from the ground and the transfer to your hands. Doesn't mean that you're going like this, see? <laughs> you need to keep the center as the access point and you transfer power around that center, right? So that you don't end up throat losing this and sway, wobbling. Okay, let's put that all together a couple of times and hopefully it'll start making some sense. So as we did, Wrapping around this, like holding the ball, but not holding the ball. Now ready, one, lift and shift into the right side. Two, twist and spiral, reach to the left side. Now three, we're gonna use shifting and roll back with the left, chopping down with the right. Four, turn around, bringing the right hand in. Now five, switch and transfer through to the right side, shifting power. And because I turn my right side in front, I have this twist saved. I saved a twist with the left. Now square up. Okay, now from here, see, pull back with the left. The right side feeds in a little bit, small push, very subtle. Since the whole body shifts back, see, the whole body shifts so that saddle push doesn't really look like a push. If I stay still, it look like this, okay? Because I'm feeding power through there. But since everything moved back together, it looks like they're both pulling for a second, even though one's pushing, one's pulling. Now look, I pull with this side and pick up the toe, drop the heel, make sure you sink into your feet. It's a lot of basic skills we can't get into because 30 minutes. And then, uh, Sink down low, drop your tailbone and push deep through the right side and then through the left side at the end. Okay, so all total, that's five shifts from front to back. Okay, and 10 changes of yin and yang. So what usually people call is like pang, li, ji, an. Actually, there's 10 different changes of yin to yang to spiral through your back from the ground to an opponent. So the opponent should always feel a constantly changing force that, that sets them up and causes them to overdo their own re response or own reaction to what you're giving them. Okay, let's do it again, all 10. We're gonna make it paint by numbers, ready? One, two, I'm exaggerating so you can see it, three, Four, see I'm pushing on the wrist. Sorry, I didn't show this up close, right? Pressing on the wrist. Now five, shift from here. Six, finish. Okay, seven, pull back with the left. Eight, pull back with the right. Nine, push with the right. 10, push with the left. Again, I'm making big old body movements so you can see it. Okay, two more times, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Justin, there's four minutes left. Yeah, I got it. Four hours, no problem. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three, 
That's all three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm going to show you one time where I hide that instead of making it so exaggerated. I want you to see it is the, the it is basically the classical lunch way you're used to seeing. Okay, I just broken it apart so you can know the secrets, the Taiji secrets. Okay. <laughs> okay, having fun. So watch me. See, here's a more hidden one. Look. The power transfer will be, you will feel it but it's not so clear. Yeah, but again, that's, that's changing. Wait. Yin and yang, 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 yin and yang. From the ground, each one is a completely new way from the floor to your hands. Okay, if you just move your hands, you broke tai chi. Tai chi should be whole body connectivity. Okay, again though, that doesn't mean you hit with your body. You hit with the force through your body. You have to stay still in the center so you can transfer like a wheel. See? Or different kind of waves, right? So I use different waves, right? And it's, you know, yin and yang is always changing around in different ways, but they never go double yang or double yin. Okay. Any questions? You have one minute to ask a question. Two minutes. Oh, really? Okay. Well, if they think it's two, they might take too long. <laughs> no? That was just so perfectly complete. That everyone's like, wow. Okay, good. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Show me some Sanda. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Sanda too. But yeah, any questions? Do you want, me to, you want to go through it one more time then? Yeah, that, can, you, can you go through one, one more time, please? Okay, cool. So, oh, you guys can't see it, huh? Sorry, I don't have my uh, school anymore. I'm out. Uh, I'm out. Uh, so where? So where? Ready? Ready? I'm here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you do single whip and two backflips. <laughs> All right. Okay, great. We're, we're, we've hit the time. Thank you so much, Justin. Oh, thank you very much for the, the fun 30 minutes and the chance to share something maybe a little unique about Taiji. Thank you. And next, we'll have Bruce, uh, Bruce Wang teaching Sanda. Uh, Bruce is the national medalist and current uh, USA Sanda team member. We will have a quick 30 minutes crash course for Sanda. And quick reminder, you can turn on your camera if uh, you want to follow along. And Coach Bruce will try to uh, check out everybody's move once in a while during the class. And we will also try to leave a little bit of time for at the end. And it's only 30 minutes. So without further ado, let's have the workout started. Go ahead, Bruce. Hi, thank you, CD. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Coach Bruce. And uh, let me check my screen really quick. There you go. All right. So today, we're going to go through the basic send up workouts really quick. OK? And uh, I think most people have never done send up before. So I'm going to break it down on a few parts. All right? So first thing. Oh, we get attention first, all right? Make sure you just, you know, feel comfortable. First thing, take your left leg to the right side, to your left side. Stand with your shoulder, good. And your left leg, take one step forward, just perfect distance, all right? Nice, good. 
Three, turn your whole body and your toes to the 45 corner, your right hand side. Nice, everyone doing good. Five, put your elbows like this on your chest, straight down. Nice, nice, good. Six, put your hands up straight. Make sure you, your elbows straight, okay? Don't open your elbow. I don't want to see your chicken wings. Make sure your elbows straight, all right? And seven, I turn my whole body to the front. I lift my chest to the 45, and my knee and my toes to the front, and my head and my hands, okay? There we go. Nice one. Let me see you quick. Excellent, excellent, good. All right, let's do it again, guys. Take it easy, okay? It's a fundamental sign so don't be too nervous. Everyone's shoulder to rest up, relax. When you give me a fighting stance, I don't want to see your shoulders up because it's too intense, too tight. I want you to relax, okay? So one more time. Take a step to the left. One, good. Stay forward, two. There you go. Three, turn the 45 corner. Good. Four, elbow on the chest here. Nice. Five, hands up. Six, turn to the front. And make sure you leave your chest in the corner, elbows in, all right? And hands up and chin down. There you go. Let me take a look. Nice, excellent, man. Everyone's a pro potential stand up fighter here. Nice. All right, take a break. So first thing I want to explain why we're doing this, because uh, Sanda is involved with a lot of kicking, wrestling, and punching, right? So why we want to put the elbows into your ribs? If I fight like normal people, like people never trained before, they will open fight, punch like this. Guys, if I do this, my fighting stance, I will get kicked on the ribs all the time. Okay, either roundhouse kick or front kick. So I prefer everyone to relax the shoulder, put your elbows relaxed, cover your whole ribs, like protection. See it? So if someone try to kick that, I can use my elbow to catch and block it. Okay, someone front kick, I can block it. So keep that elbow safe. All right, so next steps. We're gonna talk about the full walk really quick. All right, I think that's fine enough. So later, we're gonna do three step forward, one step back, and left and right, okay? So first thing, I tell all of my students, lead in leg go first, okay? Lead in leg go first. Leading leg go first. If I step back, my right leg is my leading leg. Left, leading leg. Right, right leading leg. Just don't cross your leg like this, okay? I don't think there's any sport you cross your leg because right now I try fighting my balance, all right? So if I go to left hand side, my left leg go first. Right hand side, right leg go first. Forward, front leg go first. Big wall, right leg go first. Got it? It's a simple, right? All right. So next one, we're gonna stay three times forward if you can, okay? So one, two, three. There you go. But guys, make sure your hands on the temple here and chin down, but don't open your elbow like chicken wing. Relax, put your elbow on your ribs here. Like just comfortable. Good. Step back three times. One, two, three. Good. Make sure your foot steps not too narrow, okay? I don't put my feet at the same line, like an A, triangle, okay? Nice. All right, run now to the left hand side. One, two, three. Nice, everyone follow up, nice. All right, right hand side, relax your leg. One, two, three. Good, good job guys. So this is a, a basic concept, okay? Uh, in the future, when you guys go, I want you jumping or moving without no thinking, okay? So most time when we fight, I will hop in. Left, right, forward, backwards. Even I can move around, you see that my feet never cross. I can keep moving, keep moving, can move it, okay? Why we're doing this, the full really important because most time, without the basic fundamental the full walk, you cannot skate from the punches and you'll get too busy with your foot. 
full walks. Okay, so let's do again. And right now, we speed up a little bit. Okay, so fighting stance. Just relax. All right, left hand side first. Ready? One, relax. You can move your shoulder a little bit, relax. Two, relax. Let it go smooth. Three, nice, nice. Right hand side. One, two, three. Good. Four. One, two, three. Good. Backwards. One, two, three. Good. Excellent. Excellent. One more detail. One more detail, really quick. So when we go, guys, your shoulder for sure relax. Okay. Don't intense up. You'll get burned out so fast. Relax. Put your elbows close to your wrist, like what I say. Here. That's it. And right now, what we're doing, uh, move your shoulder because it helps you relax your shoulder. And second, they're helping you dodge it, okay? So most time when we're fighting, not only step back, step in, left and right. Sometimes we can dodge in too, okay? Someone give me a jet, I just move my shoulder. I go to right side, uh, dodging the hook, dodging on the hook, okay? Right move. So first thing we're gonna do the next steps. We're gonna do the dodging before the punches, okay? So later, fighting stance. When I say one, you turn your whole body in a little bit with your shoulder. One, there you go. Two, straight down, both knee down, and chin down, good. Three, go to the foot, other side. There you go, four, in back and come back. Nice, relax a little bit. We do one more time, relax, ready? Left side, one, good, two, three, four, good. Guys, man, you guys are excellent. Right now, we're going to do speed up a little bit, okay? So right now, I want you more relaxed. Like you are real fighting right now. Left side first, ready? One, good, two, three, four, good. Guys, when you do the number four, right? I want you to transfer your body weight from front, lean back, and come back, okay? Don't stay here too long. You stay here too long, you cannot stay there no more. You say you got stuck. So lean back, and come back right immediately, and chin down. One more time, left hand side. One, there you go. Two, three, four. Nice, excellent, excellent. Right now we go to the right hand side, okay? Your right hand side. Ready? One, two, three, four. Come back fast. There you go, one more time, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent, excellent guys. Good, good, good. So right now, why are we doing this, okay? So we're gonna be breaking down step by steps. Full walk, really important, right? When we fight, in and out, left and right. Maybe your hand skills not that mature, but your full walk can help you be more like, uh, how do you say it? More optional. If I want to step in, I step in. I want out, I, I can be out. I don't want to stay there as a, like a punching bag and get hit. Okay, if I don't feel good, I step back. If I feel good, I attack it. Okay, I can do different angle attack. Right side, outer side. Okay, so I can go different direction with the dodging skills. So right now, we're gonna talk about um, moving again with a shoulder moving. All right, that's the most basic concept. All right, so later, fighting stance. When I step, Right, I turn my shoulder first. One. When I step again, four, I turn my outer shoulder in. Two. There you go. Three, step in four. Good. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Good. Take a break. So why are we doing this? Because when someone attacking you, attacking you you can keep dodging. When someone coming, you just step back. Move, 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 move. 
or when I attack him, I step in forward. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one more time. So relax your shoulder, shake it off. Ready? One, good. Hands up on the temple here. Two, outside. Three, good. Four, five, six. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. So, uh, before we go next steps, anyone has a question before we do in this fall? Y'all good? Excellent, man. Y'all are the most uh, strongest fighter I've ever seen. So, okay. Next one. After the steps, after dodging, we're going to talk about attacking right now. I know most people more interest, interesting how to punch on someone's face, right? Right? I know, I know. That's the more best part here. So right now, I don't want to break it down for the beginner level, for the left hand first, okay? Just watch me really quick. Like what I say, when I put my hands up, my fighting stance. When I punch, I don't try to open my elbow. If I punch it and open my elbow, first, the distance too short. See it? I don't extend all the way. So when you punch, keep your elbow close to the ribs from A to B, B to A. One, two. You see my elbow, I don't open. One, two. There you go. But guys, please, please, please put your hands uh, above your eyeball here, okay? Let us for showing you, but the real happen, I put my hands on the eyeball. One and two. Okay, let's try it out. Ready? I'll say one and two. One, punch you out, two, bring it back. Okay, one. Good, guys, rotate your hip a little bit. There you go. Two, bring it back. Good, relax. Let, let's see my left hand, relax, uh, this way. Watch, I turn my hip a little bit. One, two. One, two. Why I turn my hip? Because watch this. If I didn't, I didn't turn my hip, that's how far away I punch. If I turn my butt a little bit, then my knee is more longer, okay? So turn your butt a little bit and bend your knee a little bit, make the travel more longer, okay? One more time, hands up, on the eyebrow here. One, good, stand it. Don't open your right elbow, keep your right elbow in, and keep looking forward. Good, two, there you go, ready? One, two, nice. One, two, good, excellent, excellent. So next one, just a quick explain, guys. The left hand is most, uh, uh, I'll say weak, okay? It's not as strong as your writing hand, right? Like you most strongest hand is your writing hand, right? You're writing with, and you do a lot of stuff with your right hand. I say you're softball. So this one, guys, I prefer you go fast. A and B, B to A. One and two. Don't, one, two, three. This is most of the beginner's problem we have. From A to B, pop. Okay, look at the side, pop. Don't drop. If I drop, I'll get counter right immediately. Straight in, straight back. In, back. In, back, okay? There you go. Nice, nice, good. Relax your shoulder, guys, don't get up again. Relax, relax. Try lay on the spot, you can see like your nose here. Don't too low, kind of like central line to your face. Okay, not here, okay, more here. Bruce, All right. ready? Okay, thank you. Ready, again? One, two. Nice. One, two. Good. Guys, don't open your right elbow. Keep it tight. If you open, I will counter you, kick you with your ribs. Keep it to your chest here. Okay? Ready? One, two. One, two. Excellent. So right now, when I say go, you give me one punch in and out as fast as you can. Okay? Like you catch your fly. Ready? See you can be faster. I can see all people here. Let's challenge. Go! 
Let it go. Don't move your head. Keep looking forward. Go. Good. Relax your shoulder. Go. Let it go. Make sure you turn all the way, okay? Go. Nice. Relax. You can move your shoulder. Help you relax. Go. Good. Guys, when you punch out, I want you to breathe out loud, okay? Ish. Ready? Ish. Good. Ready? Go. Ish. Good. Rest the shoulder. Go. Ish. Good. One more time. Go. Ish. Nice. Good job. Good job. Man, y'all ready for the super fight right now? Take a break. Relax a little bit. So, next one will be the another good one. Your powerful punch. Okay? If you can end right on someone's nose or someone's jaw, it's a guarantee you break someone's nose or knock down somebody because that's a true wicked spot in a human body. Okay? So, guys, I will more spend more time on this one real quick. Okay? Take a look. It's the same concept exactly like your left hand. When I punch, I don't open my elbow, okay? If I do, too short, and my, I lose my balance. So when I punch with my cross, my left hand is a straight line, from A to B, B to A. See it? I don't open, just in and back. And one more thing, when you punch, look at my hip. Same thing, I turn my butt a little bit. I punch out, I turn my butt, Bend my front knee and bring it back. Okay? Turn my butt, drop my front knee a little bit, and bring it back. And peel it with your uh, your foot. You see my bottom foot? I turn and come back. Turn and come back. Okay? Let's try it again. Let's just separate two parts. One and two. Okay? So give me a fighting stance. Ready? One, stand there so I can see your skills. Good, relax, relax. Two, there you go. One, two, good. Guys, one more thing. I like a cross punch the best because when I go, my shoulder still holds in my face. See it, I don't punch low, I get hit. Shoulder relax, cover your chin, that's it, and come back. All right, one more time. Relax your shoulder. One, good, two. All right, one, two. One, two. Excellent, guys, excellent. So right now, when I say go, you give me the cross punch, but I don't wanna see a power, okay? No power, only just the speed, okay, from your body. I don't wanna see you punch hard. I say go, pop it up, okay? Make sure all the way here, not here, all the way. Okay, ready? Let's challenge each other. One shot, ready? Go, hey, good. Turn your hip, turn your hip. See my, my hip? Don't halfway, turn all the way and come back. Ready, go, hey. There you go, relax your shoulder. Ready, go, hey. Good, guys. I see a lot of people moving your head. Don't move your head. Your head keep looking on the front. If you move your head, you lost the target. Where's my next target gonna be? So turn, keep looking on the front. So I'm ready for next punch, okay? Keep looking on the front, keep looking at me. Use my face as a target, okay? Ready? Go, hey. There you go, come back, relax. One bit, go, hey, she. Good, relax the shoulder. Go, Nishi. Good, one more time. Nishi. Good, ready, go. Good, ready, go. Good, relax shoulder, guys, relax, relax. Ready, relax, go. Good, one more time, ready, go. Nice, good, shake it off. Excellent, excellent, guys. Just a uh, quick reminder, really quick. When you try to punch, if you try so hard, your skills don't get tied up, okay? Like a robot. No, I want your both hand like whip, pop, pop, smoother. Turn my body, turn my body, and come back. 
Okay, from the whole power is from your course here, not from your arm too much. I turn my hips, boom, boom, and let's go. So right now, I'm gonna teach you the first combination, one, two, okay? Guys, this combination is best, best, best. I, I'm not joking. When I was beginner, I used a one and two. I land on a couple people with this good punch because so fast and a good distance, okay? But please, don't try at home, okay? Don't punch your family or something like that. Just try punch in the air, all right? So right now, I'll show you really quick. You guys can follow up, all right? So we talk about left and right, right? So one, two is most like a fast combination. Pop, pop. But I don't want you punch too short, okay? First, you punch nobody, okay? Maybe you punch your little kids, but I want you punch your adults. Make sure you turn your hand all the way, all the way. See it? So right now, slow motion first, ready? One, two, and a good fighting stance. Uh, your left hand go first, leading hand go first. One, two. There you go, guys, punch higher. You don't punch your kids, punch higher. One, two. There you go, make sure your elbows in, don't open, don't let me see a chicken wing. Ready? One, two. There you go. One, two. Good. One more time. One, two. Good, excellent. One more detail. Right now, when I say go, you're gonna show me one, two, as fast as you can, all right? That's why it's a combination, because it must be fast, but it must be longer, not. Okay, all the way up, all the way up. So take a look. Sorry, my, my pants keep falling down. Yee. So take a look. When I say go, longer, but right now speed up. Relax. Bah. Relax. Bah. Oh, too fast. Ready on time. Bah. 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 All right, let's try it out. Guys, put your head on the elbow here, okay? Not too low. Hi. Not here. All right, here. Ready? Take your time. You can find slow first. We're going to do five per set, okay? Ready? Go. There you go. Good. Relax the shoulder. Don't tool up. Relax, relax. Ready? Go. Good. Make sure you pull back all the way. Now, drop it. One, two. Come back, reset again, okay? Ready, go. Good, turn on your hip. Let your body weight go. Don't head weight, turn. Fast, but turn your whole body weight. Ready, one more time, go. Good, last one, then we'll take a break. Go. There you go, good, relax. Yes, Cindy? Yeah, five minutes. Five minutes, okay, okay, so. Just real talk really, uh, real talk really quick, okay? Man, I didn't know the 30 minutes pass so fast, okay? So let's just the basic idea from the beginner striking. So Sanda is uh, involved with uh, wrestling and kicking, okay? Either uh, front kick, roundhouse kick, side kick, or spin back kick, everything, all right? So um, I hope we can do more but in the future, all right? I hope you guys enjoy the, the 30 minutes video training. And also every Wednesday, I have an online class. And uh, I think it's a link on button here. If you didn't see the link, you can message Cindy, the online class link, okay? Every Wednesday, only uh, six to seven, and also, we have an uh, interaction between the students and coach. Everybody will send me the video, like uh, what we've been doing the week, the Wednesday. They will send me the homework, okay? I know I see some of the uh, uh, people I know here, all right? Like Matt and uh, Evan, they are my two of my students already. So I, if you can, show in my online class, you will see all the skills and uh, on the video. And uh, every Wednesday with a live training together. Bruce, so, there's a question. Yes, ma'am. 
So uh, Sam is asking, what's the strategy and mental uh, differences for a South Pole fighter, like when you're fighting a South Pole fighter? Oh, uh, who, 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 who asked that question, Henry Greek? Uh, who asked Sam? that question? Oh, Sam? Okay, look at this. Well, this is real, 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 totally real quick because uh, I have a left surgery on my left hand. So right now, sometimes I fight with the South Pole. And guys, if you never train stand up before, I will stay your right hand, your power pen behind. Okay, don't switch your stance. Except you have injuries and you switch. If you fight someone with a South Pole, right, I want to use my right hand go first. Why? Except right now I'm South Pole, right? If an other guy is the left side, will be, we are kind of left and right together, really close, right? I won't let my right hand go first. So why, why I doing that? Because I, my right hand go first, my left hand can come on more deeper, okay? If I go left hand first, I try go right hand. That's how close I can go, okay? Don't do your one, two on the south pole because they will counter you. That's their good position, all right? I've been fighting south pole maybe like four months already, so I kind of understand how they change the, the angle. So if you are normal side, right, your left hand on front, right hand on the back, let your right hand go first, and left hand go. Okay, see how long it is? Right hand go first, and left hand go. So you made the distance longer, and you have more opportunity to attack the south pole. Is that a good answer? Good? Anybody else has any question? No? Oh, all right. So, like what I say, 30 minutes is not enough for me to teach all the really basic foundation striking. Okay? Same for the Kung Fu. You have to spend a lot of time to practice all the skills, right? So, same for Sanda. Sanda, you must learn how to step in, how to step back, how to step in attack, how to step back attack. Shooting, wrestling, kicking, and counter. Okay, so I really hope I will see you guys in the future again. And also, I hope I see you guys on online class because uh, like what I say, online class is one hour and you can see all the video we've been post and you can learn more, you can watch over and over and over again. Okay, so like what I say, training more, watch more video, they will improve your skills, even as an online class, but you'll get the, the basic foundation knowledge the skills in your muscle memory, okay? And you can try one day, go to the boxing gym or a MMA gym, you can spar in, you'll see how good you are, like before training or after training, okay? But if you're not ready for sparring, don't do it. Dangerous, okay? Just relax, work on a shuttle boxing. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, Two, one, two, okay? This sounds really basic, but I guarantee you, if you see all the boxing fight, a MMA fight, they use this to destroy their opponent, okay? Most basic skills is most useful skills, all right? For, for my philosophy, I don't have a sk special skills I can teach you guys, all right? No, like a karate chop or counter throw, or kick someone's, uh, you know, I don't do stuff like that. I just do pure stand up. Okay, so guys, thank you so much again, and I hope I will see you guys soon. All right, all right, attention, really quick. Good job, guys. I will see you guys again. Salute. See you guys soon, okay? Thank you, everyone. Uh, I post the links to the online school in the chat. And uh, feel free to uh, reach out to our Facebook, the USAWKF, for more information. And hope everybody has a nice afternoon and the weekend. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye.